And Jermaine, can you hear me? All right, good. Gilbert, we'll start with you, man. Hey, Jermaine. Uh, I just want to get your thoughts on, uh, you know, I think you're going to start at a right guard for this uh, Falcons game. How are you feeling about that? I'm excited. I'm really excited. I've worked really hard. Um, been doing everything I can to prepare um, just to play anywhere, honestly, to get a chance to be on this line and, you know, get the chest of the coaches and the players and have a potential to start this week is exciting. And going off that, you know, saying you're excited about starting, uh, what did you work on that you want to show uh, for this game for, throughout the whole offseason that you worked on? Sorry. I just worked on just the fundamentals, really. I worked on overall strength and power, um, really just perfecting my craft how, as it relates to this offense and how I can contribute, how I can add on to the, the great offense that is the Los Angeles Rams. Um, I've worked on my physicality and, you know, really being intentional with my steps. And I feel like it should, you know, it's going to show. Thank you, Tremaine. Appreciate it. Jordan. What's up, Tremaine? How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Thanks. Um, in terms of that positional rotation, um, over the last couple of years, it's been pretty clear through at practices and at camps, like they've tried you at a bunch of different spots and you've had to absorb so much at one time. So can you take me through that mental process of learning like an entire book versus one section? And then also how that changes physically, because if you're at tackle, obviously you're doing things differently physically than when you're at guard. It's a very good question, Jordan. Um, it, all, it all starts with the mindset, right? Um, we're all on the line, especially we have to know what is going on across the board, right? It's, it's really imperative that we not only understand our jobs, but how our jobs affect the men next to us, their jobs, and then their jobs outside of that. And having a, a holistic, you know, comprehensive understanding of the offense helps you do your job even better, right? Um, as far as physically and, you know, it's little different nuances, positioning the body stuff that you have to do, uh, positions as, as far as like before snap, um, it's tough. It for sure is, especially coming into to the league, only playing both tackle spots and then having to learn guard, which is a whole new world. Um, I had a lot of great teachers. I had a lot of great coaches that helped me. All the players that had come through here, watching the film, um, just studying through them, getting pointers and tips. Um, it's, a, it's a process for sure, but having them put me in different spots and challenging me uh, really helped me become the player I am today. And as far as you know, mentally learning what to do and stuff like, like that. As far as the fundamentals of the line, they're all the same. You just, you know, you implement them differently. And having to really hammer in those details and those fundamentals at different spots helps you become an overall better player. And I'm really grateful they gave me the opportunity to do that. Thanks for the insight there, Tremaine. And I, I wondered too, like I've always kind of wondered this actually, is when you come in and you're also, um, you know, building muscle and you're also just getting yourself in NFL shape over the last couple or keeping an NFL shape for the last couple of years from college and all of that. But you also are under the understanding that like, as someone who's expected to be versatile, it's like different, maybe body types and different types of ways to keep that physicality in, in various ways. So what's in the weight room and stuff, like what's that like in building toward understanding like you may need to specify one week, you may need to specify somewhere else another week. Actually, that's a that's an interesting perspective on that because um, contrary to popular belief, uh, I think that as far as from my my point, point of view, it's, it's really about being the best player you can be. And sometimes, you know, five or 10 pounds here, it really isn't the number. It's how you feel at the number, right? 320 can feel like, a, a, you know, a bag, of brick, a bag of bricks or it could feel like a bag of cotton to somebody else. Um, if I feel powerful, more powerful at 305 than I do at 320, then I'm going to work at that. If I feel faster at 320 than I do at 315, I'm going to go with that. And it's more, of a, it's more of a player feel, right? You don't have to fit a certain archetype to be able to dominate. You just have to do what you do the best of your ability. You don't have to be an Austin Corbett. You don't have to be a Rob Havenstein. You don't have to be a David Edwards. You have to be the best version of Tremaine. And wherever you feel comfortable as far as weight, as far as preparation, 
you know, that kind of fluctuates a little bit here and there, but ultimately you just want to feel the best of your ability, your best, I guess, comfort level as you can feel. Thanks, Jermaine. I appreciate that. Of course. Stu. Hey, Tremaine, thanks for making the time this morning. How are you, man? I'm doing well, Stu. How are you? Great, thank you. Uh, wanted to go back to what you were talking about with, um, you know, kind of how the fundamentals of each position of the offensive line are generally the same, but there are obviously still some differences. So from that perspective, what was the uh, biggest adjustment for you as far as a guy who was mostly a tackle by trade coming in and, and being developed as a guard when you got here? I would say the, the nuances they kind of sped up. A lot of them sped up as far as your steps, as far as your, your hand placements. A lot of things did transfer over from tackle to guard. Um, but just the way you hit certain blocks, your intentions, a lot of the emphasis that you you do with the combinations start at the guard position. A lot of, a lot of combos start with the guard. So inherently, you're coming off faster. You're initiating contact. Um, you're making decisions quicker. It's not a lot of thinking. It's a lot of, it's a lot of doing. Um, and it's kind of built off of instinct. A lot of the really good, really good guards in this league, it seems like they're just playing reckless, fast, like like barbarians. But really, they just have done it so much that it's instinct for them to hit blocks, get off, shit to the next level, do all these things, and really just repping that and hammering in these instincts. And not breaking so much the habits that I learned to tackle, but just rewiring my mind to use the techniques faster or in different ways. Um, when I got inside. And then when you're repping with a center or next to, I should say, a center that maybe you haven't repped with as much before, is there anything differently that you have to do as a guard as far as getting in sync and, and kind of making that transition? Absolutely. You got to get a feel for how they hit the blocks, how comfortable they are with certain things. Um, one center may like his guard using a lot of hands and getting long. Another center may like his guard really throwing his body in there, being reckless. It really just depends on the connection, the camaraderie, the, 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 you know, the overall like mesh that you have with that guy. And that takes time, that takes reps, that takes communication above all, you know, it takes, it just takes a lot of grit that you have to work through. Thank you, appreciate it. Of course. Gary. Hi, Tremaine. Um, what uh, you, you mentioned some guys, Austin Corbett and David Edwards and some others that have played that have started a guard for the Rams the last few years. What, if anything, specifically can you identify as things maybe you learned from watching those guys and practicing with them and being in the meeting room with them? That's great. Um, from, from David, especially Big Dave, call him Big Red. Um, He's, he always has a hand plan. Um, he goes in and he works it really diligently, um, studies his opponents and really understands, okay, how am I gonna hit these, these blocks? How am I gonna have my pass pro ready? Uh, what can I take from this, the, old, the last game? What can I bring into this game? And he's really good. I mean, he's one of our best linemen. He, he continually goes against AD, which, you know, if you don't know that guy's pretty good at football and he'll force you to kind of come with a plan. Um, <laughs> So I've learned a lot about my hand plans and body positionings from David. Um, Corbett is, is <laughs> he's different. Whenever I watch Austin Corbett, I see a really high motor. I see a brawler. I see a guy that's, that's in, the in the fray a lot. Um, he, he, when you ever watch him, you just see him really commit. You know, he plays fast, he plays strong, right or wrong, he's gonna go. And I think that that served him better more else than it served him worse. And whenever I see him play, I'm, it makes me motivated to really go in there and just let it fly. Trust your technique, trust yourself. And it worked out really well for him. So most doors again. And then just generally speaking for an offensive lineman, you know, when your quarterback gets sacked, what, what's, I know you got to go to the next play, but what, what's going through your mind if you turn around and your quarterback on the ground? Damn. <laughs> yes. First one going through your mind. Damn. Um, you take it for what it's worth. You um, first you go over there and help him, make sure he's okay. Uh, that's your hundred million dollar quarterback, you know. Um, and then you kind of just learn from that play. Lean on your teammates. Check the jumbotron. See where you messed up. Flush it. Next play. 
You have to have a quick memory. You just can't you can't linger on that too long. You got to learn from it and go. If not, it's like a chess match. You're just in your own head, and you might mess yourself up. Thanks very much. Cool. Jermaine, we appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Oh, Stu, you got one? My fault. Yeah, sorry. You got time for a quick follow-up, Jermaine? Yeah, shoot. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, just wanted to ask you about um, Coleman real quick. Just what do you notice about him from – you know, working with him in practices or, or games or whatever setting, even in the meeting room, what's it like, you know, playing, practicing alongside of him? It's like having a coach on the field. The guy's incredibly smart. He's super athletic. He's very technical. Um, the guy thinks three, four steps ahead. Um, I think having him on my team, playing next to him has been such an advantage for me. Um, just being able to soak up information from him like a sponge, being able to watch his techniques because you know, Coleman's not the heaviest guy, but when Coleman is out there and he's playing, he's 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 sharp on his technique. He's he's very he's very diligent with his body positions. He's always in the right positions, and you can really take a lot from that when you when you take how he looks at the game um, and you apply it to how you play. A lot of good things come, and I think you know, sad what happened to Brian, but we're gonna be just fine. With Coleman at center. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Of course, do. Anybody else got anything? Appreciate you, man. Good. All right. Thanks, guys. You have a good one.